On today's episode of Tuesday Tools, I'm looking at a once again insanely powerful tool for Adobe After Effects. This is an effect called Mosaic. Disclaimer, this only works for Mac OS. However, you can use it in Adobe Premiere Pro. It also works in Final Cut Pro as well as Apple Motion. I'm so sorry, Windows users. This effect allows you to do pixel texturing, adaptive tiling, and like a million other things. You can really use it for a ton of different stuff, as you'll see. If you want to check it out, please follow the affiliate link down in the video description. All right, let's get into it. All right, in this first example, I just want to dive under the hood and go through each and every parameter of this plugin so you can see how it's really working. And then after that, I'll show you just a few other examples. So you could just because there's so much you can do with this tool, it's insane. So here I shot a clip of my hand against a black backdrop. So I'm going to go over to effects and presets and I've already installed mosaic. I'm going to type it in and make sure you don't grab the mosaic, the stylized effect. Make sure you grab the yellow box, very different effects there. So right away, you can see it applies this look, which is looking pretty cool. If I play this back, you can see that it plays back pretty darn good. I'm working on in a, a, like a mid 2014 refurbed MacBook Pro. And um, this is pretty impressive how smooth this is. In the effect controls panel at the very top, you'll see the logo. Click on that logo and it'll launch a web browser, take you straight to the support documentation, which is very, very helpful. There's a quick start guide, shows you how to use it on any platform, which will get you up and running very fast. But once again, this there's so many parameters and this is so powerful. You'll definitely want to dive in and take a look at how to work with these. Right under the support documentation, you have the presets drop down menu. And there's uh, just a ton of different options here of different looks. And if you change, you you know go in there and customize the parameters, you can actually save out your own. For the sake of keeping things simple, I'm gonna grab the ASCII binary on white example here. And um, this is gonna be a little bit easier to explain. Essentially what all these presets are, are the, these are different, um, what they call a texture atlas. So it's a group of different elements that when you use this effect, it maps those to different pixels or pixel groups of your source footage and then those are mapped via luminance values and it gives you different looks which you can customize. So this one's really simple. The texture atlas here is just consists of a one and a zero. So if I play this back, you can see we got some little bit going on with the hand there, but I'm gonna customize this. One of the first things I like to do is close all these groups in the effect controls panel because it's just, when you're looking at that many parameters, it, it, it's over, it can be overwhelming. So you can see we have like almost 10 subgroups here. So I'm just gonna kind of go through these and we'll see how this works. At the very top, you can see you can use an AE camera. So you, you toggle that and then you can put a camera in your scene and, and fly it around and go in 3D space. Super, super cool. Now under extraction, this is like a luma keyer. I'm gonna use this to key out that black background. So I'm gonna grab the threshold and start to bring that down. And as I bring that down, you can see my hand becomes visible. So I'm gonna go ahead and invert that because I wanna key out that black. Okay, I can see the black backdrop here. And that's because the composite on is set to original footage. So there's three different options. I can composite this uh, ASCII texture on a solid color. I can do it on transparent or the original footage. I'm gonna switch it to solid color. And it defaults to white, which looks really cool already. Look at that. Now I can change the opacity here, change the color. I can bring this down to zero and now you can see we've got it on a transparent background. But there's still a white color in the back of each of these cells. So these are like cells. So I can turn the opacity of those down or change the colors of those a bit later. You'll be able, you'll be able to see that. Now under tiling, you can really adjust the look here. So it's set to uniform. You can toggle that on and off and then you can adjust the density and the adaptiveness. So if I bump up the density, let's just bring it up to like five you can see now it gets a totally different look here. With adaptiveness, it's set to zero. So if I start to bump this up, you can see we're getting different size cells here that are adapting to, I assume, those luma values of, of uh, my source footage of the hand there. Because you can see around the edges, they're small. Toward the middle, it gets uh, a little bit larger. Okay, next up is the material subgroup. A bunch of parameters in here, super overwhelming. I'm scared. Okay, I can preview the texture. And again, this is a really simple texture. So the texture atlas, once again, is rows and columns. You can create a custom texture atlas, which you can use, which I'll show you how to do later. This is just um, a two, two columns and one row. Is that right? Or two rows and one column? Whatever. All we have is a zero and a one. So it's going to, based on the luminance value of that source footage, it's either going to map the zero or the one. Super simple. 
I can switch the texture from ASCII to graphic or custom texture. We'll go into a custom texture later. Um, there's different ways I can modify this. The padding, I can um, adjust the font type. It gives me some info on the cell, the width, and the height of that. Next up are the material colors. There's two different color modes here. You have raw and custom. So this allows you to change or colorize and, and change the parameters of the individual layers of these different cells here. So if I go back to the support documentation, you can see here that there's um, a material front color, back color, you have the back color of the cell, and then the original image as well. You can make adjustments to all of that, or you can keep it at the default if you leave it to raw here. If I bring up this colorize parameter here, you can see it blends it in with the original footage. Now if I go back up to extraction and I switch this to composite on transparent, once again, um, I'm gonna turn on transparency here. You can see that the backs of these individual cells are not transparent. So you can change this to custom, and as I change this to custom, suddenly you see now they are transparent. It's really hard to see it, but you have that white there. I turn that back off. Now you can see this is properly, um, this is properly transparent. And I think it actually changed, yeah, it changed the text from black to white. And I can change that back if I want, but I'm perfectly fine with that. But now this is proper, proper alpha. So now I could, you know, export this out with an alpha channel, bring this into something else, and just, you can go crazy. There are literally so many different things you can do with this, it blows my mind. And if you want to go crazy here, you can change the opacity of each individual element. You can see that the back color opacity is set to zero, but you even have options for contrast, gradient, yada, yada, yada. I won't get into the specifics there. Next up is the mapping subgroup. This is where you choose all the specific parameters of how you want your texture atlas elements to be mapped to your source footage. So first up you have a balance. It goes from zero to one. And this is going to allow you to favor different elements of your texture atlas. So if I bring this closer to zero, you're gonna notice it stays, um, it picks only one aspect of my texture atlas. And if I go up toward the higher end here, toward one, it's gonna stick to those zeros. Um, now if you have like a texture atlas or a motif with like 16 different elements, you'll see that it, that it chooses you know, and leaves out specific ones. So I'm going to bring this back to 0.45 because I like the mix here. Now once again, these are added or these are mapped via luminance values. So if I'd like to mix that up, I can add noise and this is going to allow me to just, you know, make it a little more dynamic, mix things up a bit, but I don't need to do that. I already like the way that this looks. Now if I toggle the alpha, once again over here, you can see there's this cell back color. Right now it's a specific color. If I turn the opacity up here, you can see now I can specify that. I can even use an image source. So man, there are a lot of options. <laughs> if I'd like to randomize this once again, I have a cell index offset. I can offset that as well. So you can animate that. So if you have like a still image and you wanna bring some motion into it, you can animate. That's one parameter you can animate. I can stretch the texture as well. You can see, pretty cool. There's this group called wireframe. If I enable this, this allows you to see, if I zoom in here, you can actually see that there's a grid and each of these individual cells now has a wireframe. I can solo that so you can really see it. Check that out. And you can change the wire type. So you can change it to all these different things, quads of four, you have crosses, I'll turn that off. I'll go into a specific example of that later. You have a bunch of transformation properties. You can scale it, do all kinds of cool stuff. Under rendering, you have the anti-aliasing. You have a motion blurry that you can turn on, and then your mapping accuracy. What the is that? Okay, so I gotta have a map example here. So I've got this map of France. I'm gonna drag it into a new comp. It's a simple uh, solid color here it's just the country border now i want to show you how i can use the mosaic effect with a bunch of other effects and how how dynamic it is as if the number of parameters in this effect wasn't already enough to wrap your head around but it can work with a ton of other effects so i created a custom texture atlas here so this is Lea Sedu. she's a french actress if you haven't seen her movies they're fantastic go see them she's one of the best actresses in france uh next to juliette binoche but uh, she's just great. So I have I have created this little grid here. It's a PNG uh, on transparency. There are four different photos of her, and this is going to be my. These are going to be the elements for the mosaic that I'm going to create. You can see it's a simple uh, grid of two columns with two rows. 
So I have to drag that down here in the timeline if I want to use it, but I don't need the visibility visibility to be on. I can lock it, shy it. Um, I'm going to turn this map back on. So the first thing I want to do is I actually, I'll add an extract effect to get rid of this background to knock it out and add the transparency. I can do that in the mosaic effect, but I'm just going to go ahead and add this other effect to show you how it works with other effects. So I'm going to grab extract and just punch this down, punch this up to to knock out that background. And then I'll close this. And now I'm going to, um, you can see I have the nice transparency here. Now I'll go add the mosaic effect. And it's applying nicely here. OK, so let's close all this off. Now I'm going to quickly run through the parameters here. I'm going to be pretty fast because I don't want this tutorial to be like two hours. So the first thing I need to do is I need to set my texture. So I'm going to go down to Material. And under Texture, I'll go to Custom Texture. And this is going to allow me to set the custom texture here. And you can see it allows me to choose a layer. So I'll use my layer, so do Texture Atlas 1. And it applies it, but it looks horrible. I need to customize this. Well, first off, we can see that it defaults the numbers of rows and columns to four by four, and we need two by two. So I'll go two, two. Okay, that's looking better, but you can still see it's all squash. There's a bunch of problems. So to take care of the aspect ratio here, let's go to tiling. And all you need to do is turn off uniform. And that's going to snap that into place and make it look a little bit better. Um, we'll mess with the density and the adaptiveness later. I want to take care of all these other issues. So it's looking really dark. So if I go to Material Colors, I can turn down the Colorize, because I think it's trying to use the colors of the background as well, like blend them together. I don't want it to do that. All right. That's looking good. Now I want to be, I want this texture, these, these elements to be on um, Alpha. So if I go to Mapping, right down here, Cell Back Color, it's set to black, and the, black, the back opacity is all the way up. So I'm just going to simply turn that all the way down. Now I can see this little wireframe here. So if I go to Wireframe, I can disable that. And now you can see we're starting to get somewhere. So let's go back to Tiling and start to play with this. I want it to be more dense. So let's go up to something like 8. Now check this out. Great. Looking great. I can play with the adaptiveness if I want to make, you know, more. But the thing about this is is the fact that my map is a solid color. So this works off of those luminance values, so it's not having a lot to play with right now. So when I mess with the adaptiveness, you're always going to have these tiny little ones near the edge of your alpha and near the inner points it's going to get larger so that's not very dynamic i want to, if i want to ch i mean if this is the look i want to go for that's great but i want to change that so what i could do is i could come down here to mapping and i could add noise and play with the noise to to break that up but one cooler thing to do is i can add a fractal noise to this map and basically mosaic will pull the lumen information from that fractal so i'm going to right click here go to noise and grain fractal noise you can see now we have the fractal here, but I messed up our mosaic, and that's because it's below the mosaic effect. So again, render order, I need this to be above mosaic, and then you can see, ooh, something cool is going on here, and that is we have a ton of little Leia Seydoux heads. Um, now I want to get rid of the background here, so I can go back to mosaic, extraction, and I can choose composite on transparent, and that should knock that out. So it's still reading it. But um, wow, now we have a pretty cool thing here. Let's go to transform and like scale it up by two. Okay, and it looks like we've got all four heads. There's one, there's another, there's another. And now not only can I play with all the parameters here, I could go back into tiling and play with this, but watch what happens when I go to fractal noise and I play with the brightness. Watch, boom, 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 boom. As I change those luminance values, it's gonna change what I've got going on over here. So if I want to create some kind of animation, I can animate these transformation properties in Mosaic. I could animate the fractal noise brightness or contrast. I can animate um, the cell index offset here. I can animate the tiling parameters. So if you're doing like explainer videos, this would be great because like let's say you're talking about um, a war in a country, like there's a country that that does uh, that creates a lot of weapons or something. You could have a texture atlas of a bunch of different weapon icons and then show that and then have some graphs. I mean, the possibilities are quite 
limitless. All right, I'm gonna give you another quick example that shows a few different ways that you can use this effect. It's really, really cool. So here I got this clip of this rocket tearing through the sky, through the clouds here. Downloaded this from Envato Elements. So if you wanna check out Envato, they got a ton of great stock footage and graphic elements. Um, you can follow my affiliate link down in the video description. Okay, so I'm gonna drag this clip into a new comp here. And I'm going to apply the mosaic effect using adjustment layers. So I'm gonna to go to new adjustment layer. And what I wanna do first is I wanna add an overlay. So I'm gonna give it like a UI feel. So I wanna add a few overlay elements. So first off, I'm gonna to go to effect controls with this adjustment layer. Right click, go to yellow box, mosaic. Okay, so it defaults to this like pixelated look. I'm gonna to go to the presets here. And I'm gonna scroll down. Um, there's like a ton of different stuff I can use here. But I wanna go to, with these cool crosses down here. They have a wire cross overlay. Let's grab the white one. Okay, so now we got these crosses here. Oh boy, so many parameters. So many parameters, I am very anxious. I'm gonna go to extraction and I'm gonna composite this on the original footage. And now right away, check this out. We have this cool cross overlay that's going to track. So as the rocket like flies across the screen, it's like we have this computer thing that's like tracking its location. And we don't, the bonus here is we don't have to do any motion tracking. Ew, motion tracking. All right, so that's a quick element that we added in no time. I'm gonna rename this adjustment layer. We'll call it crosses. And then I'm gonna duplicate it. And I'm gonna call this one, let's call it like quadrants or something. I don't know how to spell quadrants. Okay, for this one, I'm gonna go down to um, the wireframe options here. So essentially what's going on with these crosses, it's a simple wireframe that's enabled and under wire type, they selected crosses. So if I switch this, um, let's switch it to like uh, four triangles. So now we get this cool like wireframe with the triangles here. I'm gonna turn the opacity of this one way down so we can still see the crosses. Let's see here, maybe bump up the thickness a little bit. And if you could throw a glow on here, this would look really cool. Okay, so now we've made the overlay a little bit cooler. I could go crazy. I could add like nine of these to, to make it look really cool. I'm gonna add a new adjustment layer. Let's say we want our interface to glitch out a little bit. So I'm gonna add a new adjustment layer and I'll rename it glitch and Let's go ahead and add mosaic again. It has this pixelated effect here, which I'm gonna go ahead and go with. Too many parameters, anxiety, anxiety. Let's bump the density up and turn this way down. Okay, so now we have this crazy pixelated look. I'm gonna go down to transform and let's zoom way in. I'm going to turn off uniform scaling and let's go ahead and add a keyframe to X scale. And well, let's just bump the X scale up a little bit like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna go like two frames and then I'm gonna crank this scale up, this X scale like way up like that. Grab both of these and I'll toggle hold keyframe and then I'll go maybe another two keyframes. And now I can trim this clip. And now what do you know, I've got a little glitch. And now I can duplicate this glitch, drag this out, and then tweak the parameters ever so slightly. Okay, so there you have it. That's Mosaic for Adobe After Effects. Really insanely powerful tool. If you wanna check it out, please follow that affiliate link down in the video description. Let me know what you thought down in the comments section. If you wanna see more content like this, I have a Tuesday Tools playlist where I review different extensions, scripts, and plugins. That link is also in the video description. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell, and blah, 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 blah.